yourselves a round of applause for being here. Uh, let's try it one more time because I want you to practice applauding because we're going to celebrate some really wonderful, wonderful Roselle citizens and Roselle supporters. So if we can go ahead and give yourselves another round of applause. My name is Sonia Ashley and I will be your MC for this evening. Some of you are mine, but most of you probably don't know me. That was a joke, right? So, my name is Sonia Ashley. I'm, I'm actually homegrown. I'm Roselle, a citizen of many, many years. Went to Abraham Park, graduated from Abraham Park. Yay! Came back from Abraham Clark to uh, open a business, and now I get the privilege of being your MC tonight to introduce to you a number of great, great people who have supported and served Roselle in a very, very, very powerful way. So the Roselle Chamber of Commerce, first of all, wants to thank you all for coming out tonight to support uh, this endeavor. And we want to first open up our ceremony with the National Anthem, which will be rendered tonight, if you all can please stand, it will be rendered tonight by the voices of the new generation. So we're going to turn it over to you. Officials, can you please stand? Oh, there we have. Okay, we have Mr. Sam Bishop and we have Mayor Bernstein. Let's give them a hand. Now, I'm excited about again having you all out here tonight. We're going to start dinner, but before we get to dinner this evening, we want to make sure that we get an opportunity to. Uh, partake again in the new generation, the voices of the new generation. So they're going to come and they're going to render a few selections for us as we uh, continue to get prepared for dinner. And then after dinner, we will start our award ceremony and we're going to be recognizing again businesses in the area as well as community and civic leaders in the area. And we're excited again about the recognition that we're going to be giving out tonight. So at this time, I'm going to ask the voices of new generation to come forward. And this group is actually, it hails from um, the area of uh, Essex County as well as Union County. Okay, I don't know what happened. This is Mr. Jamal Barnes, and he can just introduce you to the voices. Good evening, how is everyone doing? <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't hear you, how is everyone doing? This holiday season, we bring you greetings from the great city of East Orange, New Jersey. And we are the voices of the new generation. Thank you. My name is Jamal Barnes. I'm the founder and the director of this group. It's about half of us. So uh, we have some high school students, so they had school tomorrow, and a few uh, that had some other obligations. But we're just happy to celebrate with you uh, and to be with you this evening and to just celebrate uh, hard work, and the values of hard work and business and things like that that help to make our community strong. And that's the value that I uh, hold dear. I'm a former councilman in the city of East Orange, so uh, organizations like the Chamber of Commerce are very near to me that they strengthen the community and allow for people to come together. We're going to just bring two songs to you. Is that okay? Uh, I don't know if you know Jill Scott. Uh, she's a, a singer, been in a couple of movies with Tyler Perry and all of that, but she has a song called Golden. Living your life like it's golden. So we're going to sing that for you. And then the second and final song that we're going to do for you is a song called This Christmas. Loving each other makes it easy.
board members. Uh, most of them are standing here to my right, to your left, to, I'm sorry, my right, your left. And I'd like to introduce the board members to you. So, we have standing there Mr. Julio Lewis. <laughs> Mr. Ben Schmidt, Senator, our Vice President. We have to Mr. Don Alvarez, one of our directors. <laughs> Mr. Frank Allen, another one of our directors. <laughs> and we have our treasurer. That's the money man. Y'all met him when he came in. Mr. Phil. <laughs> when you hear your number call, you're going to say, oh yeah. Okay. So by calling your number, you're going to say what? Oh yeah. Okay. And then when I call the next number and you have it, you're going to say, oh yeah, again. So if I call your number the second time, you say what? Oh yeah. Some of you should remember this from last year. If not, I'm going to remind you. But if I call the number and you don't have it, you're going to say, Oh no, okay? So the first ticket starts off with a zero. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wait a minute, hold on, let me try this again. First ticket, first number, we're gonna call six numbers. First number is zero. Oh yeah. Zero. Oh yeah. One. Oh yeah. Eight. He's won a wonderful twenty dollar gift certificate to Pinhole's Beacon. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna get, get started with our awards this evening and this is the reason that we're all here gathered and we're just excited and we're gonna start off with a blast. This is um, a person if you've been in Roselle for more than a day, I'm sure you've probably frequented or you've gone by uh, to see this person's business. This is our Business of the Year Award. And um, before I actually do that, let me just uh, introduce my co-host now at this part of the ceremony. This is Mr. Craig Mallon. He is our business owner on Chestnut Street. He owns... Provincial He does speak, you know. Provision Links. I'm the one that got kicked out. That's right. Hold on a second. Provision Links. No. <laughs> but this is Mr. Craig Allen, and he's going to help me at this part of the uh, ceremony. But this is a person that when we started in Roselle, uh, the Roselle Chamber of Commerce, this is one of the first people that were very instrument instrumental in our reconfiguration uh, of the chamber. And she was very, 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 very helpful as she is today and every day. Whenever you call upon her, she's always available. And there's no other one person, or I should say business, in Roselle that most people know of near and far. And that is Pinhole's Bakery. And we like to give it up to the great Julian Pinhole. This is one of the hardest working women in Roselle. Okay? One of the hardest working women. Yes, yes, come on. Give it up for her. Give it up for Julian. Okay. Julian, come on up here. Come on up here. And you tell me she's the hardest working woman in Roselle. Thanks. Um, Thanks. 
and this loud. This is not the Julie Pino Award. This is the Pino's Beauty Award. So I don't do it all by myself. I'm going to tell you that the mastermind to us being in Roselle happens to be my husband. Can I take your last? He thinks because he's going to wake up in an hour yes, no. and start baking oh, at 10 o'clock. Um, and he does this pretty much six days a week and sometimes even seven. Um, he had the vision to start a little bakery in that little corner and it was the perfect corner because I think God brought us to that corner because it's yes, the perfect right. place for us. Yes, right. um, and we were blessed to have some, t some of the bakers that actually came with us from Newark and I think the newest member of our baking team is probably 17 or 18 uh, years with us. Um, and aside from my husband who is a master baker, a master engineer, um, he has a vision, he is a dreamer. Um, when people thought he was crazy for opening up a, a retail bakery in that little corner, he kind of shooed them because he knew, and that was his dream, to have one of the most successful retail bakeries in Jersey, and I think we've pretty much got to that point. We're blessed. Um, I'm going to tell you that our success comes from a lot of things, but it also comes from decades of hard work and dedication that from the generation behind us. My parents were not bakers, but they were there with us the whole entire length, and they dreamed with us. And my in-laws, who happened to be master bakers, um, were there as well with us. So we honor them by continuing their legacy of hard work, of being just good people and giving back. Um, that's the legacy we hope to leave our two boys, which are, happen to be here. Um, they might not necessarily become bakers, but we want them to take her name and to create um, dreams of their own and to leave some footprints on this earth that say, wow, you are a Pino, because I am proud. Um, I inherited that name, but the Resente Pino name has a lot of honor that goes with that. And I couldn't have done it without my two sisters, so we all get confused, right? There's three of us. Annie and Linda. Um, they got my back, no matter what. They're there to work 12, 14, 18, 20 hour days when the holidays come around. Um, when we, when I fall, they, they pick me up, and when I can be there for them, I try my best to be there for them as well. So that's what I, and that's what I and Raul and all of us want to do, is to leave Roselle a better place than when we came back here in 1991, because we've been here for 25 years, and it's a blessing to be on that corner. So thank you for this honor. Um, I always say, awards and plaques are really nice, but what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what really makes our life what it is. So we love to be part of it. If we can help you, we, we try our very best. Um, but only by the grace of God do we do what we do on a daily basis because it's a lot of hard work. But thank you for this honor. Thank you for acknowledging our hard work. Uh, boys, listen up. You have big shoes to fill. And they're not mine, but your dad's. So, and your grandpa's. So, I would not be a kid out of school for talking too much. Our next award is the new business of the year. It goes to a great eatery across the street from where I work in. Cooling, running, and restaurant. Some people have a lot. They're always smiling. It's like I go there on vacation. I feel so great. I feel like I don't have to have anything much, you know, and be contented, be happy. And uh, so um, when I got the opportunity to have the restaurant in Moselle, it just came 
I just fell upon it. And the guy said, do you want to buy it? And I said, sure. I didn't even think. I, it's my first year being in the restaurant business. But I went in there because I love to cook. And I love to entertain people. I always have people at my house. And I love to cook great food. So I decided I wanted to be like having a party every day. I want when people come in just to enjoy the food. I like when people enjoy it. When they don't enjoy it or they say stews, I'm like, okay, gotta change it. We gotta make it better. So look what weddings care about because it doesn't matter whether you have much or you have little. You just have to be happy with whatever you know you get. So I sell small sizes and bigger sizes and trays for people who would like it. And so I just want to welcome everyone to be able to have a great home cooked meal, to feel like you're in your grandma's kitchen. That's, in, you know, in the kitchen just eating and having fun. So that's, I, that's what I want to do. I, I, you know, I try to make it nice for people when they come in. And I just want people to have a great time. And just to make Roselle at that little corner, cool, you know? And, and that's just, you know, what I want to do. So thank you very much for the award tonight, and thank you for the support. I, I see some of my customers here. And I thank you for the new customers that I'll be getting soon. <laughs> So again, that is so wonderfully Roselle, and I, I'm excited to have a forum by which we can exhibit our local businesses as well as those businesses that expand beyond the local reach, like the Pinhos, that do just a phenomenal job for us as well as the world. Our next award is going to a person here, and again, Roselle that has done a lot for the community as far as bringing us to an academic space when it comes to books, authors, and the such. We just recently, she just had a wonderful expo at the high school, and she brought in uh, book and authors from all over the country. And I don't know how many people got, I got a chance to attend the book fair that was at the high school. It was absolutely phenomenal, okay? And this young lady hails right here from Roselle, and she's just doing an amazing job. That said, I want to bring up Renee Smith, who's going to be receiving the President's Award for her business, Independent Authors Book Experience. Let's get up on Renee Smith. Um, I just want to say um, thank you to the Roselle Chamber of Commerce for this award. I'm deeply humbled by it. Um, when I got the email on my phone, um, I thought this was another congratulations. We have won a $50 gift card to Walmart. Really, I was calling my and then I opened the email and I saw that it was a nomination for the 2016 Home Based Business Award. And I was so shocked and I was just teary-eyed because it was just so surprising. But I really appreciate the honor. Um, one of the things is when you do things that you love, you don't expect praise or accolades, um, but it really makes the journey that much sweeter when you do get them. And just to know that um, the people in the community really respect and appreciate what it is that you're trying to do. Um, for myself, I am an author. Um, I have five published books, two cookbooks, and two children's books. And one of the things that's very important to me is literacy. And um, I truly believe that reading makes a man, a, a, a full man. And one of the things that I try to do with my uh, business is to promote literacy, to promote independent authors, and by doing that, promoting literacy for the young and old, and to bring that to the community. So one of the things that I do is I host the Book Expo, and we have independent authors coming from all over the US. We have people coming as far as Virginia, South Carolina, Texas, Tennessee. We have people as far up as Massachusetts coming to this event. We have, um, we host poetry events that are dear mirror. She also said um, her own, her own piece, which you, she recited poetry there. So 
we try to do a lot of things for literary events to bring literacy to the community because um, we need our children to read and even as adults we need to read as well so that's something that's really important so I just want to take a, a, a little minute to just say thank you again and um, one of the things that I would like to leave with you um, starting this business for me was very important um, because I just had a vision, you know, God gave it an insight and I said, I just have to do it. And that's one of my mottos is, what are you waiting for? I mean, I'm not promised tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. So if there's something that you want to do, just go ahead and do it. I mean, there's, the, the worst you can do is lose. The worst somebody can say is no. But you make it a yes. So that's for me. That's my, that's my business thing. I, I just go and I just do, and by the grace of God, you know, something happens. And my last thing I want to leave with you, because I'm on a two minute, two minutes, um, is one of the sayings that I have for my book. I have a Freddie series, it's um, Freddie, he's a little boy, he's nine years old. And actually, Freddie is my husband's nickname when he was a little boy. So, um, all, all my books have some kind of time. But one of the things that, um, in this book, Freddie's first race is, um, if you work hard, Stay focused and never give up. By the grace of God, you can achieve your dreams. Thank you for the award. SJ Enterprises. SJB Enterprises.
all supporting the work that we do, but also supporting the businesses that support you here in Roselle. So again, uh, we thank Shantae and we thank Renee uh, for what the work that they do for the community in the uh, in the, in Roselle. All right. So the next award that we have is for our pioneers. Uh, Rose Roselle Chamber of Commerce really appreciates the people who actually started. Okay, started this chamber many years before this particular group got together there was a group of people that not only started but they they started it and they held on to the chamber uh, while things were being worked out uh, tonight we have uh, several awards that we want to give but we do uh, have one of those persons in the house tonight so we want her to come back up and that is Julie Penhall she was one of the founding members and was pioneer of the World Chamber so we appreciate her so we have another award for her tonight and uh, Julie, you get, actually because you're the one that's here, you get their minutes, yeah, you get all their minutes too. So come on up here real quick, and just tell a little about the journey of the chamber in the early days, because you were there. It didn't happen yesterday, I forgot about it. <laughs> um, I don't even know how long ago it was. Um, probably over 10 years ago, a few of the businesses in Roselle decided to revive the chamber. Because um, we go through episodes where the businesses want to get together, promote a little bit of change, and just work with the government and, and the town to make things a little bit better, not only for the businesses, but the citizens as well. And so back then it was John Bush, um, Ann Beeman, um, Valerie, of course, myself, uh, Vince Belluccio was part of our team. Um, and I thought we got, had a great start. Um, mayor and council at the time were totally with us. We put up those signs that said, welcome to Roselle. We had a couple of great initiatives going on. Um, but like all groups, we kind of go through phases. And I think we, and at one point we thought, you know, new blood, new ideas. Um, sometimes we need that. We just need a, a bright, fresh look at, at a, a, the same old group and maybe things could change up a little bit. So we kind of um, stepped back a little bit and let the new eyes of Roosevelt come in and um, they're doing a wonderful job. You know, um, they're looking out for the businesses, they're looking out for the citizens. I know they're working really hard with the mayor and council and you know what? Um, there's a bright future ahead of us, not only as business people in our town, but as just good old uh, Roselle uh, lovers. So um, it was a great time being part of, of um, the chamber back then when we started. Uh, it was still great to be a member. Um, I would suggest anybody that has any kind of business dealings or relationship with the town should join because there is great power in numbers. Sometimes when you come and you want to address an issue and there's 20 of us, Sound is not as much as when you have a group of a hundred roaring. So please join our roar. Uh, come out and support us. We meet every month. Um, see one of these beautiful peoples for the time and place. Um, and uh, we look forward to all working together again. I should say is the principal of the year. Uh,
speak, what we will be. We are in the morning, success academy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm a little thrown off, but I have to say, Thank you, Team KSA, for your, your support. Uh, welcome, everyone else. I'm sorry. That's that's, that's my fault. I'm sorry. All right. I, before I even go any further, I just want to take a moment uh, out of sequence of events is to first acknowledge the KSA staff who came out in big numbers. I'm just hoping they report to work tomorrow. But let's give them a big round of applause for coming out. I'm going to go through a couple of things, and you know, I, I'm, I'm excited, I'm a little lost at words, but I'm very honored to first be here on the stage. Uh, when I got the uh, email as well, I, I received an email that said a Principal of the Year Award from the Rosedale Chamber of Commerce, and you know, I had to read it again, I said, what the heck is this? <laughs> you know, spam still getting through my survey. <laughs> and, but it, I, I took a moment, I just have to say to the Rosedale Chamber of Commerce, uh, thank you for this opportunity to, to represent the Roselle Public School District and my mighty KSA team because it, it's truly an honor. So give yourself a big round of applause. First of all, uh, well, thank you uh, for telling me in advance that I only had two to three minutes to work with. I appreciate that. So what I initially had, I wrote, I had, I had several pages, well, so I, I, I want to just streamline it, okay? I want to streamline it. Streamline. You know, you don't get these opportunities too often. But before I even go any further, I just want to take a moment. You know, it was back in 1988 when I met this 17-year-old girl. Yeah. yeah, she was 17 at the time. That I was introduced to the borough of Roselle. I had no idea where the borough of Roselle was. I met this young lady when I was attending college, and you know we met. Ultimately, we got together. You know, you know how that goes. And, uh, uh, you know, she kind of got me to Roselle. Told me that about this little town called Roselle. Twenty-five years later, you know, somehow I'm still here in Roselle. But I think I have to give her the credit because if she would have never took me into her life, I don't think uh, I would have made it here. And that was the start of my Roselle journey. So, honey, thank you. That goes out to my wife, Lauren. It was her who told me that I should come to Roselle and first, uh, you know, I needed a job to uh, take care of our first son after we eventually had been together for quite some time. But, you know, I came into the Roselle School District as a substitute teacher. And I have to tell you, I was very excited just to be able to make that per dean rate. I think it was like $35 a day. So I was happy. <laughs> But little did I know that that would turn into a career over a span of 25 years. And over those 25 years, I've been in a number of positions from my most current position, which is the Kindergarten Success Academy principal, all the way up to the Abraham Clark High School principal, the L.V. Moore principal position, to the seventh grade math teacher. So I, I had a very interesting journey. And one of my teachers, Mr. Darrell, often tells me, she says, you know, you need to tell your story. You know, I often just live my story. I don't have time to tell it. I'm just living. You know, so Mr. Dare, you just kind of go through this journey. But people like uh, Mr. Dare and often my, my my second oldest son often say, you know, you got some things going on that you need to tell people about. And I'm always inspired by those things because the people that are closest to you often just drop little things and keep encouraging you. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything unique about what I do. I just think that I surround myself with some very talented people who keep getting the job done and keep getting the job done. So I want to thank all those folks who are part of the, I want, I want to say the Fisher brand, the Fisher brand, uh, for making my job look very easy. So thank you for, for all the things you do. I do want to acknowledge a host of professional colleagues that I've had my pleasure of being a part of. Uh, a number of my colleagues here who are administrators. Where are the Roselle administrators? Are you out there? All right, don't be sitting there quiet. Y'all know y'all scream, so you need to make noise. Uh, stand up for a moment, because I don't think they understand the impact of what we do for the 2,700 children here in the world. And 
I'm always proud not only to share with this, this award with my Roselle admins, but there are a host of other administrators across the state who uh, you know, I have the pleasure of having a wonderful professional and personal relationship. So where are my other admin fellows out there? Just stand up, let, you, let yourself be known. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, yes, yes. And I share this because, you know, we share resources, we share information, we communicate about different challenges that happen in schools, but more importantly, we just kind of build this network, and it's, it's a very powerful network. Uh, that, you know, I couldn't do the work that I do if I didn't have folks like that around me. I also need to take an opportunity to say a couple of, of good buddies. I got some 30-year-old buddies, 30, 40-year-old buddies who've been with me for 30 years who watched me progress over the years from the silly guy in the neighborhood to the, the professional guy. So let's see, where are those 30, 40 guys at? They know who they are. Stand up. Yeah, stand up to face me and uh, change the room at. I got a guy up in the balcony who drove all the way from New England, Connecticut tonight. He said, he said, listen, listen, this is important. And I think it's important. But let me just take one step further. And I'm, I'm a, a mic hog. Okay. I'm sorry. I, but I got to let, I got, you know, I got two uncles who stood in as father figures growing up who came out tonight. They came to the last minute, but they made it. But uh, they hit. But uh, they hit. Uh, why don't you say them? Lee, Rufus, stand up real quick. Show yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they kind of went to some of the parent conferences for me over the years, you know, as, as a young boy. So thank you for your guidance and uh, your mannerism. Kind of, kind of really did what it needed to do. It showed. But I just want to thank you know my entire Roselle community. I've been in this district for 25 years, and it's a continual challenge. You know, I take nothing for granted. I'm responsible with so many lives that are very impressionable. So one of the things I like to do is always make sure that everything that I do is for the benefit of the children. You know, when I, even when I leave this place at the end of the night, I often go home, and even if I'm in the company of my friends who I often hang out with, I'm, they're always asking, what's going on with your little kids? So where are those other hangout friends? Don't just put a little, little low hand. Low hand, yeah, yeah. But it's important that I tell you this because, you know, I'm not a man who takes all this for granted. You know, there are a lot of people who serve in a supporting cast, who stand in there, who are behind the scenes and really keep me on par to make sure that I do what I need to do. I do want to let you know that this is a very rich and spirit community. You know, often, you know, I often ask myself, why am I still working in the district? There's so many great opportunities. There's lots of great opportunities right here in this borough. Wonderful things. It's just a matter of bringing everything together and making sure that we have a very comprehensive educational program, a very comprehensive spiritual environment, a very compre uh, comprehensive financial environment. That's why this Chamber of Commerce event is so important to bring all those units together. So I know the, the, the politician out there, I know you're sitting saying, how does all this fit together? It just fits together. You know, it's like a puzzle. It's about putting all those pieces together. You know, we don't work independently. We rely heavily on all the resources. And I have to commend my fellow, my fellow recipients tonight because I'm very inspired by the young lady running her business. Because taking those bold steps is important. You know, it's very important to take those opportunities and show our young folks that you can do it with limited resources, but if you have the drive and determination, you can do it. I just want to leave you with one thing. Because I, I cut this thing down short for you. I'm looking at your faces. <laughs> Okay. I'm looking at you. I'm looking. You know, and I, and I told my son, my youngest son this morning, I told him, I said, listen, I know it gets difficult. I said, but my one word for the year is forward. And I said, listen, if you just keep working and keep working, even if you fall on your face, at least you fell forward. So keep going forward. And that was the words I left him this morning. So thank you, Chamber of Congress, for everything that you said. Okay, we're going to ask the police chief to come forward, and he's going to be acknowledging the work of our firefighters. I'm sorry, police chief, I'm sorry, not firefighters, I'm going to do that. I apologize. This is police chief Gerard Orlando, and he's going to recognize our police officers. Good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for uh, recognizing uh, two of our police officers this evening. 
Uh, this is the third year in a row that the Chamber has reached out to me and asked for a representative from the Police Department for Officer of the Year. It's not, um, it's not in our nature to uh, look for recognition. We are out there 24-7, 365, weekends, holidays, uh, days and nights, uh, sworn to uphold the laws of the state of New Jersey, the borough of Roselle, and protect the residents uh, of Roselle as well. That is our job. Uh, we're not out looking for recognition. Um, we take pride in our position as police officers to serve the community. So when the, uh, the chamber sent the email asking for uh, officers' names, it's hard for me as the chief of police to pick anyone out individually because uh, the men and women of the Roosevelt Police Department work very hard every day. And every job that they respond to uh, is special because they're there helping out uh, is to the best of their ability. So I look back at what happened in the year 2016 and Officer Aaron Silva and Luis Arias uh, performed admirably early in the year uh, on a call that they were sent on. Now as a uh, part of that, police officers, we're trained uh, in a lot of different areas. Uh, it's really uh, amazing. It, it, find it hard to believe how much training that we go through every year and how much training we're required to uh, go through every year. And there's things that the public doesn't know about, but behind the scenes there's a lot of activity going on other than police officers driving around in a police car, uh, patrolling the streets, conducting investigations. Mental health training is one of the areas that police officers are required to attend training. Uh, that has been ongoing now for at least five years in Union County, and all our officers do go to this uh, it's almost two days worth of training in mental health. And the officers that responded on this call earlier this year, I believe it was in uh, February 2016, officers Silva and Aries responded to an individual a suicidal, uh, what turned out to be a suicidal male, uh, which he was trying to uh, cause bodily harm to himself as well as others that were in the area. And these two fine officers responded and they had to try to defuse the situation before this person hurt himself further, hurt any persons in the area, and cause bodily harm or injury to these two officers. These two officers were extraordinary in their response. They were able to handle the situation with the utmost professionalism. And officers, we are trained in use of force and how much force you can use at any given time. And as you all know, there's been a lot of activity across the United States uh, recently with law enforcement and use of force concerns. These two fine officers used their best judgment on this evening to bring this situ difficult situation to a positive outcome. There are many ways that this situation could have ended that evening, and these two officers chose the path uh, of police resistance to bring the incident to a successful conclusion. I want to commend Officer Arias and Officer Silva for a job well done. Um, they both deserve the recognition, and I'm very proud of them. Congratulations.
Also, I want to thank the firefighters who are here because they work with us every every day. Thank my family and friends, my girlfriend, my father, all that have came out tonight. Also, all the police officers that are at the table and serve our community as well. Um, it's not an easy job. We deal with a lot of stuff, but um, thank God, I'm safe. Um, my main concern is going home safe to my family, making sure the community is safe. Thank you. I also want to thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chief Orlando, again, for being considered uh, for this new work. Um, like my partner said, it's not easy coming to work, and every situation is different no matter what call you go on. You never know what to expect. And uh, like you said, our main concern is just to go home to our you know, family, my beautiful wife, my uh, newborn son, Henry. Um, I thank all my family and friends that are here to support me, my partner, Officer Silva, for always being there, you know, and on every call, no matter how small. And uh, again, our firefighters were also here. They were also work with us hand in hand. And uh, everybody in the borough goes out. You know, we try to do the best that we can to our ability to uh, make sure everybody gets home safe at the end of the day. Thank you. Next up, we'd like to honor the fire department here, Dr. Mayor, Chief Machado. 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 Good evening, everybody. Uh, luckily, for about the last 10 years, we've always followed the police chief, so it's much easier for me to just say ditto. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce uh, for what you do. You're doing an outstanding job for our community, and you guys really need to be recognized. Uh, congratulations to all the wonderful recipients this evening. You guys certainly deserve all the accolades that you're getting. Um, Italian Chief Jeffrey Breed, homegrown, Roselle lad his entire life, uh, born and raised here, opened his first business after high school. Unfortunately, we burned it down. <laughs> Joined the fire department. Uh, he's served admirably for the last 25 years. Rose up through the ranks. Uh, if there's ever anything that we need to do for our community. Jeff's the guy I turn to. He helps out day in and day out. And I'd like to congratulate him on a wonderful, wonderful career. And again, thank you, General Cruz, for honoring me tonight. Thanks. Every year we have a um, Memorial Softball game for one of our lost brothers. 
uh, which is a great event. Now we believe we play football. And, uh, actually, it's very good. We raised a lot of money. Actually, the police raised some money this year for uh, needy families for Thanksgiving. It was great. Um, I'd like to share this award with all my brothers. Because without, without them, I wouldn't be standing here. But a great bunch of guys. I'm lucky enough to work with some of my best friends. And uh, when they say brothers, they really do mean brothers, because we do fight a lot. <laughs> but we also do love each other, so that's most important. Uh, last of all, I'd like to thank my family. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> they are the reason why we're here. Um, I, they put up with me running union business, training, um, get called out in the middle of the night for fires and EMT calls. Do a lot of medical calls, working every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, which we do, along with the police department. So I'd like to thank my wife Donna, my son Stephen, and my son Nicholas. Without them, I thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I want to acknowledge um, the next recipient. And this is for our Educator of the Year. Now, let me just say something about this person. Uh, most people probably would say, if you're here and you are not in, in the school arena or in the academic realm, you'd probably say, now, who is this person? And I will honestly say that she actually hides out, okay? But trust and believe her reach goes deep and wide in the educational field. She's been in this community a long time, a very long time, and she's touched so many lives uh, in the work that she does. And if you read her bio, as you see, it's extensive, and she too is an author. But she does an amazing job with the gifted and talented youth here in Roselle, as well as within the state. So with no further ado, I want to bring up Ms. Mariella Mark. Good evening. Thank you to the Roselle Chamber of Commerce. When I think back to my first day of school in Roselle 35 years ago, wearing those huge Norma Komali shoulder pads that made me go sideways to get through the doorway in my classroom, but it was very, very in style. And then waitressing at night because, you know, nobody told me that I wasn't going to get paid during those two months. You know, I just thought I'd, if you were a teacher, you had summers off, but nobody told me that you didn't get paid. So, of course, I had to waitress at night in order to pay for that place at the Jersey Shore. So it was a different time indeed. Dressing was different. Makeup was different. Education was different. And right now, 35 years later, instead of that bungalow at the shore, I'm going to a dermatologist to fix the sun damage on my skin, and instead of collecting uh, ski ball points, I'm on Weight Watchers points, and I am letting the hair go gray rather than covering it with Miss Clarol number 52. So I started teaching in 1981 at the ripe old age of 26. I think that picture in the program. Sonia is probably from that first day of school, it was like 20 years lighter and 20 pounds lighter. Um, I felt that from that very first day that if I could make it till June, I was leaving education and going into the, the corporate world. Fast forward 25, 35 years and here I am accepting an award in education. I didn't leave. Not only did I not leave, I, I taught in the same building for 33 of 35 years, and basically in the same classroom up until about six years ago. So back in 1981, when I started teaching, children would ask, hey, did you teach my brother or my sister? And I was very gracious in my answer. 10, 20 years later, kids were coming up to me and saying, hey, did you teach my mother or father? And I'd be like, yeah, you know, this is pretty interesting. Well, last week I had somebody ask me about a grandmother, so I am not following family trees in Roselle anymore. 
So, although things have changed in Roselle and education, the world of technology is changing even faster. In education today, we have to not only teach technology, but we have to teach how to use it safely and effectively, and even fix it and reboot it. In a very complex and increasingly stressful job, I stand in awe of my fellow educators as they attempt to navigate the minefields caused by standardized testing and politics getting in and making decisions about education. And all we're trying to do is give students the tools necessary to lead successful, independent, 21st century lives. I've had the good fortune of spending the last 30 years as Roselle's gifted and talented coordinator, extending that role to working with and advocating for New Jersey's brightest children. These children will not make it on their own. They cannot make it on their own, contrary to popular belief. This fact is exemplified in the fact that 25% of our nation's brightest youth drop out of high school each year. They need and are entitled to equal benefits and equal instruction and guidance based on their unique educational needs. Thankfully, due to the un unending support of the Roselle Board of Education, and this is for the past 35 years, they embrace gifted education, they support it, they fund it, everything I ask for, we discuss it, and I support it. And so without the Roselle Board of Education, this never would have been able to, to happen. <laughs> to date, over 75 of Roselle's middle school and junior high school g and students have received scholarships to study at Johns Hopkins during the summer. These students spent three weeks studying a topic from engineering to bioethics to uh, literature and film to mystery and suspense to nuclear science and they're studying this all over the country. The international director came out last year to meet with me and I'm very proud to say that Roselle enjoys a relationship with Johns Hopkins. It's the only one of its kind in the world. They come in every year. They have granted us $30,000 worth of testing for our students and over $50,000 per year in scholarships for summer study. So, a thank you to Sonia Ashley for nominating me tonight and for using that picture in the, in, in the program. Your expertise in the area of personal finance and your dedication to the students and parents of Roselle remains an inspiration to me each and every day. To Barbara and Joanne, I extend to you my warmest friendship and sincerest respect for what you do and who you are. I must remind you, however, that we must be very careful what we wish for. That Category 5 hurricane that we lived through was survived very quickly by a tsunami, and I'm still here weathering the storm all by myself. <laughs> to Bev, my sister, thanks for helping me to find my road to peace allowing me to see the wonders around me and beyond, and of course for those great trips to Atlantic City. And to Daryl, the Lucy to my Ethel, the, Mary, the Rhoda to my Mary Tyler Moore, and the Batman to my Robin. Thanks for the laughter, the support, and the shared hypochondria. You are the only person on the planet that I know without a reasonable doubt to be a worse driver than I am. <laughs> and a person that falls with greater grace, flair, and frequency than the leaves in the fall. <laughs> to my friends, colleagues, and fellow nominees of the Roselle family here this evening, I thank you for allowing me to grow old with you. I strongly feel that each of us have been put on this earth for a reason, and I'm honored to share my journey with you. Thank you. Good night. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome, and it's an honor and a privilege, and I just want to say thank you to the Chamber of Commerce. You have done an outstanding job, and uh, I look forward to working with you again this year, 2017, out along the road. <laughs> Who here does not know George G. Woody, Jr.? All right. All right. I mean, not only is he well known in Roselle, and the county, and the state, and God knows where else. 
okay? This is a man that I've had, this is the second privilege that I've had the opportunity. At his 90th birthday, I had an opportunity to speak about him. Um, first of all, you need a book twice the size and probably every page to fill it with all of his accomplishments, community, political, and just overall, the, the things that he has done for others in his lifetime. I have a special place in my heart for Mr. George Sheewood because when I moved to Roselle in 85, I didn't know who he was. I was just meeting my neighbors for the first time. I didn't know how many people there were in Roselle then. I didn't know how many generations of families there were in Roselle then. And one day, I happened to be on East Ninth Street because there was an incident with a shooting that occurred and uh, it was extremely upsetting and I went to see. I was just a new council person for the Fifth Ward, but I was on East Ninth Street on the other side because I was then the chair of the Public Safety Committee. And when something like that happens in your town, you want to find out what can you do, what's happening, how can you make it better. It was daytime, and I wanted to talk to the mothers, because their children, at that time, and this is going back quite a while, they couldn't let their children go outside safely. They couldn't play, because they were afraid. And this, to me, was unacceptable. Mr. Woody happened to be driving down the street, and he saw me there, and he invited me to his home. He said, I want to talk to you. You know, I used to be a councilman. Not only was he a councilman, but he was the first African-American councilman in Rosa, and also the first African-American Democratic chair of Union County, graduate of ACH, uh, you know, I'm trying to think, president of the NAACP, I'm trying to remember all the things he's done because there's so many. But what he said to me in his advice, he said, a good council person goes out and talks to the people and hears what they have to say and are concerned about their everyday living. Mr. Woody also said to me, and believe me, he had walls filled with plaques. We would need a separate house that would almost like maybe a museum. Because he has been so honored because of all of his work over all these years, tirelessly, never ever turning his back on anyone. Never, ever, st not stopping to say thank you or to care or be involved. But you know what he said to me was his favorite thing of everything he ever did was his work with the softball team, correct? He loved working with children and sports. Now, he was also an athlete, by the way, and a good one. But he loved working with the children. He has all these awards for being a great leader, for being a great administrator, for having a wonderful business, successful business. His beautiful wife, Mula, of course, at his side at all times. Children. He has been successful in every walk of life and caring for every single person in Rosa. I consider myself one of the privileged... Okay. That's it. We're having the toast and we're throwing the glass on the floor for this one. I consider it an honor and a privilege to have ever had the opportunity to meet this most amazing individual, and it is truly an honor for me to bring him up here to receive the Chamber of Commerce Humanitarian Award, Mr. George G. Woody, to we please have a great applause for him. dissertation without even thinking about it. <laughs> but this tonight is really overwhelming for me. Because my key to my life and to my success is the love and enjoyment of people. Because people are all different in all different ways and each one of them is a special story. So I just want to thank you all for being here and for honoring me tonight and I accept it. Thank you. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> yes, you. For your That's outstanding right. service to the community of Roselle. I love Ro I was born in Roselle Park, but I lived most of my life in Roselle. And I enjoy people. And anyone who, who enjoys people has a rich and enduring life. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much. And at this time, without any further ado, we're going to bring up our president, Mr. Wilfred Farrell, who is the president of the chamber. And this is an amazing work that he's done to put this all together. Let's give him a hand. Because without him, none of this would be possible. That beautiful brochure that you have, that you take at home as a souvenir, he actually sat down and took his time to put this all together, this brochure. Again, we have a phenomenal leader in our president, Mr. Wilfred Farrell. And he's just going to come and give you some closing remarks, and then we'll draw a 50-50, and that will conclude our 2016 award ceremony. No? Hi, everybody. Hi. Can I be? Are you sleeping? Hi, everybody. Hi. Did you have a good time tonight? I just want to, uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, everybody who was here tonight, and I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, of what uh, we're doing in Roselle, and uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, uh, Chief uh, uh, Muta and uh, Chief Orlando. I don't know why someone here. I just want to make sure I, I say thanks to all the honorees. Um, you guys are awesome, and without you, this town uh, we would not be here. We would not be, you know, we would not be doing what we're doing right now. And you should be very proud of yourself, all the nominees. Uh, Dr. Fisher, I just, you know, he's awesome. And, and thank you so much for bringing so many people. Dr. Fisher actually brings about 60 people tonight. Let's give him a hand. And I, I, I also want to make sure I say thank you to Kathy from Tapping, too. Let's give him let's give a hand. And, uh, and I encourage everybody actually to, uh, um, you know, um, get connected to Top Into News. Uh, it's a web news uh, that's out there actually uh, every 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 day. So just I, I would encourage everybody to uh, get connected to that. Um, and I also want to say thanks to the mayor. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Thank you so much for actually working with the chamber. I mean, you know, I'm so grateful to you. Uh, we've been working very closely together for, for the past for the past year, and I cannot wait to see what we're going to be doing next year. And I also want to say thanks to the, all the member uh, the, uh, the leaders of the chamber, Mr. Quirk, Mr. Fishman, Vice President, Mr. Julio Lewis, Mr. John Alibar. And our awesome Sonia Ashley. Did she do a good job today? Yeah. And I also want to say thank you to Central Park for, for hosting our event uh, uh, this year. And I'm hoping next year will be much better. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm